Hello everyone, LD3 back with you for another video. Today we are back in the Golf Club 2 and we are playing Marion Golf Club, the East Course. Looking I love so this far. course so very much. This is probably one of my favorite courses in the world. It's one of the most historic. It's ho hosted, I believe, six U.S. Opens. Um, and I actually had the chance not to play here, but to play the West Course at Marion. I believe it was last year. Yeah, last summer I was... Fortunate enough to play the West Course Looks like this is at Marion Golf Club. And then we went to the Pro Shop after, which is located at the East Course because the East and the West Course were at were like a mile apart or something like that. So okay. we actually were able to go to the East Course. I was here. I was I saw all of the, a lot of the course and it was absolutely amazing. It, I was I was st I was awestruck. That's honestly all I'm going to have to put it. I was completely right, awestruck. Just seeing all that was here, all the history, like, watching. It was probably my first U.S. Open that I've, like, watched intently, too. So it was really cool to see some of the stuff that I actually saw on in real life. Like, not in real life, but, like, on TV, see some of the holes and stuff. Look at some of the... Holes like driving up, driving back, all the, all of that jazz. The wicker baskets, which I'm very disappointed that you can't add here because the wicker baskets make Marion Marion. Like, well, the West Course didn't have them, which again, very disappointed about. But the East Course and the wicker baskets and how they don't actually have flags on them; they have actual baskets on the on the flag sticks. So that's really, really cool and really, really different. And I really, really like that. Um, so that's why I'm playing it today. Um, just doing this as like the last video before Thanksgiving break. For you guys, this is like the fantastic. second video or the uh, like the yeah, typical yeah. Wednesday video and nothing's actually going to change. But for me, this is the last video I'm recording before I go on Thanksgiving break. So I've recorded all of the MLB The Show videos, all of the FIFA videos, all of that stuff. This is the last video I'm recording okay. before the break, which... I, which I, I'm a little sad about because I'm not going to record for about a week after this. And hopefully that sits and actually is good. Sit down so I don't have to have a super long putt. Oh, that sat down beautifully. That sound out beautifully. Come back towards the hole. Come back for me, baby. What a shot. What a shot. Get in the hole. Nice. Nice job there. And this is to go two under, too, because... I got a birdie on the second hole, yes. and there's another birdie there on a 250-yard par 3. How about that? Two under for the round. How about that? So that's two birdies in the first three holes. The winner of this U.S. Yeah, Open was one. actually at, what was it? I believe at one over par. Justin Rose won in 2013. Another cool story. He actually became a member of Marion after the U.S. Open because he just loved all the history and all the thing. Like, all the traditions and all the customs and stuff. And he actually became a full-time member. It wasn't even, like, an honorary membership. He's like, where do I pay? I want to become a member. So, that was really, really cool. And what was also really, really cool was that awesome drive I just hit. Um, and maybe I can get another good second shot to set me up with a good third. So then maybe I can start with three birdies in a row. And, unfortunately, this is goes against everything that I believe in, by the way. This course, I love this course to death, but it basically goes against everything I believe in because I like the par fives. Like the par seventy three courses are really, really cool to me, and like, like the f even the four par fives, like par fives finishing and stuff like that. I love those sort of courses, but Heading this course, the they it only has two par fives, which I'm really sad about, and both of them are in the first four holes. So we have a par 4, a par 5, a par 3, and a par 5, and then it's all 4s and 3s after that. So that's really, really, really disappointing for me. But honestly, the entire course itself and, like, the history behind it and all the awesome features about it, it makes up for all of it because I love it. And how about another birdie? Three birdies to start off here. 4-4-2-4. Four, four, four. Great work. Like, this hole. Okay. This hole is awesome, the fifth hole. I'm not sure how this course is going to show it but this green is absolutely amazing like i like this green is probably is one of the game. most um difficult greens in the history of golf because of the slope on it i don't think it's going to show it as much here just because i'm not sure if you can show it that much Looks like but this green is yeah that's not the best representation but 
it's I hope hopefully it's a good enough representation where the slope is like you can hit it over here and hit it into the water no problem well actually it is showing it pretty good that's actually not bad at all just keep rolling towards the hole just keep rolling towards the hole keep going there actually that's not terrible if the US open week that was probably 15 feet left of the pin because of how much slope this green has and, and honestly, this does show it pretty well, and now it's probably going to show it as much because I'm going to hit it five feet by the hole, and I barely touched it. So it kind of shows it, but if you look at 2013 U.S. Open fifth hole at Marion, you will see it's absolutely crazy how what, how this hole plays. Um, and I think it was one of the hardest holes on the course for the week, too. So I kind of I, I kind of understand that with how the um, with how the green is. Um, but man, this course, is, this person actually did a really good job recreating this course. Great job, whoever created this. I don't know your, who you are, but thank you for recreating this. I appreciate it greatly. I haven't played this yet, and it's looking really, really, really strong. It's a strong yeah, candidate for one of my favorite courses I've played so far. Yeah. Not just because I'm doing well, but because it reminds me a lot of actual Marion, and well, that was an so absolutely garbage shot. Stuff. I apologize there. Um... But yeah, I played the West course, which is definitely easier than the East course. I'm just going to point that out. But that was actually, the West course was where the driving range was. So they actually have the driving range on like the first hole, basically at the West course. And then they shuttle people to the East course. Either the, another cool thing about this U.S. Open, they started off 1-11 as opposed to 1-10. Okay, so that was really footer. interesting and different to see how you finished on the 10th hole instead of the 11th. Good putt. And that was our first bogey, bogey of the round. I didn't jinx it with saying, oh, look, we don't have a bogey yet. So I will take that. Um, and we are still two under par. So, so very, very cool. But yeah, so to give an update on the tour, Austin Cook won the RSM Classic this week at Sea Island, Georgia. Good job for him. Um, I, was that, I'm not even sure if that was his first win or not. Let me... Check. Give me three seconds. Let me grab my phone. From the charger. All right. I'm back. I'm back. Nice. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Hopefully you guys didn't miss me too much. Um. Let me just make sure. I think that was his first win. I'm pretty sure. So congratulations to Austin Cook. It was funny. I was looking at the leaderboard. Um. Sunday morning. And I actually saw a Cook. And I'm like, I bet his first name's Austin. And I looked. And then. Nice. Indeed, his name was Austin. Um, so, very cool there. He is 26 years old, so that was probably his first win. He was 88th in the FedEx Cup going into this week. Yeah, this was his first win, so congratulations to Austin Cook. Great job. Um, we are all proud of you here on the LD3 Gaming Golfing Community. And I am not proud of myself after that miserable putt. That was an absolutely miserable putt. I apologize there. And that goes, what, five, six feet by the hole, so... Nine here, Yay, think. actually, that went ten feet by the hole. How about that? But we are going to make the comebacker for par. I will take that. I will take that. And, and we are actually coming up to one... Not this hole, but a couple holes down the road. The tenth hole is probably one of my favorite holes on this course. Ten... This so let me see. Fairway. Probably one, because I like one. The dog leg holes are probably my favorite on this course, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. So, one... Um, four kind of is because it's probably the coolest par five out of the two. Um, five, like I said before, because of the green and the dog leg. Um, and then ten, and then probably sixteen too, just because of the way the hole works. And I'll show it to you guys when we get up there. The hole actually works it pretty cool, so. That's probably my favorite holes on this course, uh, and I I, I don't know problem. why I did that. I don't know why I just hit a full lob wedge instead of trying to, like, pitch it or something. Because I knew it was going to be short. I knew it was going to be short, so why didn't I do something else? Don't ask me why, because I don't even have the answer to that. That would have been a good chip distance-wise, but very not on the aim-wise. Can that stop rolling so that's not a 30-foot pot, please? That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Nine Thank you very much. Um... Now we're going to try to get a par here, and we probably are, and we are. There we go. 
There we go. There's another part. Only one bogey so far today. Okay, I'm enjoying so that. I'm not going to say, I'm, I bet I'm not going to get another bogey this round because I probably will. It's just the, it's just the matter of fact. I'm probably going to get another bogey this round. Now I'm just going to hit a full three wood here because even though it's 40 feet down, I'm feeling the wind is going to stop it. And I was partially right. It landed pin high, but it just rolled off the back. And honestly, that's not a terrible shot. I will absolutely take that. Absolutely take that. And just let it roll down towards the hole. Sit right there. Sit right there. Stop rolling, please. Man, I put a little too much power on that. That's okay. It's probably going to be like a four or five footer. So not a big deal. Five feet and bing, bang, boom. What a nine. What a nine. I think that's two under for the nine. I'm pretty sure. Was that 234? And it is. Nice. Great work there. I did practice a lot this weekend. I did play a lot. This this weekend was a very, very slow weekend. So I just decided I'm just going to play around, have some fun, do stuff. And here's the tenth hole, by the way. Because the fairway kind of like loops around the set of bunkers, which is pretty cool. You can go for the green or lay up and try to like play around the bunkers. I'm just going to go right here with the driver and hopefully just get to the front edge. That's my goal. Or I can just nice. do that, I guess. I was hoping for the wind to curl it around and get on the front edge of the green, but I carried all the bunkers. It's probably going to go into the rough, which it is. 286 okay. was the hole, and I hit it uh, well, 286. So I basically just hit it pin high. But that's okay. We're just going to swoop it up. Hopefully get close here. Sit down. Ah, the pitch shot. The, the lob wedge pitch shot usually checks. This time it didn't. Probably because I came out of the rough. But we are still going to have an 8-footer for birdie. So maybe we can start off strong with a birdie on the back nine. No, I played way too much break. Way too much break. If I had like a 15-footer, that would have been the perfect amount of break. But instead, I miss it by a lot. And now I'm going to try a little less break. And it's going to go straight in for a par. A little disappointed with that. Okay, so a little disappointed like with that par. I probably should have had birdie, around. but I'm not really going to not take a par, you know? A par is a par is a par. Love pars. Pars are great. Um, now we got this hole, 11, which is pretty interesting, I would say, um, just because of the river. And that was another thing that happened in the 2013 US Open. The 11th hole was almost unplayable. Unlucky. Because of some flooding that happened, and I think the flooding like over like flooded the green a little bit and stuff or something like something happened with the hole before the U.S. Open and it completely like destroyed it. Um, that's a decent shot there. I probably could have hit pitching wedge and gotten it closer, but honestly, I'll take it out of the rough. I will absolutely take well, it. Um, rough, but but green, yeah, this hole was unplayable, and then I think there were a couple other holes that were like almost unplayable and they might have and there was actually a backup plan where they had to play they had a couple holes on the west course available All right, nice little two foot for play back. just in case well, something happened to a couple holes on the east course there, because of the flooding know that, but, which uh, i think is actually really cool because then i could have said hey i played a couple holes on the west course that some pros and amateurs played during the 2013 us open that would have been really cool but it, that didn't happen. The holes were fine. They were able to play smoothly all weekend. Um, and that, that was that. But another good drive here. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty right there for a drive. I'm definitely playing a lot better than a lot of the pros did in the U.S. Open. And, a, and another thing about this course, it's short. It's only about 6,900 yards, I think. Like, I, I'm pretty sure it's around there, so... A lot of the pros, like, don't play, like, aren't, like, the longer pros shouldn't have, they should be able to overpower this golf course, basically. But they were unable to do so, and the winning score was one over par in 2013, when the pros were still hitting it miles far. That's a pretty good approach. I have an uphill putt for birdie. So, a lot of people are like, when it came to yeah, the, the time for the U.S. Open, everyone's going to be like, oh, people are going to absolutely destroy this golf course. It's going to be double-digit under par, all that stuff. And then in the end, it was one over par, just how the USGA wanted it. And it was, like, very cool. They wanted uh, par as the score all right, you nice should aim for. And that's what they did, Almost. and that's pretty cool. And But then you see something like this year's U.S. Open at Aaron Hills, so where I believe it was the longest U.S. Open, open course yet, around. and it broke He's U.S. Open records. Out. I think the winner was 60. I think Kepka got 16 under par. So it's kind of interesting to see like Marion hit one over par and then Aaron Hills hit 16 under. And they're 
on two completely different spectrums in terms of distance and like difficulty. So that's pretty interesting to me. Um, I think hopefully that's interesting. To you. Not hopefully, but maybe it might be interesting to you too. Oh, almost chipped in. Almost chipped in here on 13. This hole actually played under 100 yards okay, in the U.S. Open, which, again, really interesting thing that happened. And I'm going to make a bogey on a 120-yard par 3. How about that? Um, again, the again another thing I like is the short par 3. You got like 17 at Sawgrass, 13 at Marion, 7 at Pebble Beach. All of those short par 3s play to smallish greens. It's... It's a really interesting fact. That's, right. that's another. That's probably another reason why I really enjoy this course is because of that sort. That sort of information, just the the short par three. It 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 brings a lot of drama. It actually played under a hundred yards for one of the rounds in the U.S. Open, and I believe when it go when the, it goes back to Pebble in 2019, it's going to do the same thing. And I think it did it in 2000. Number seven at. Did number seven at um, Pebble play under 100 yards in 2000? I'm not sure, but it probably will in one of the rounds at the in 2019. Here. So that's very cool. That's got to sit down, though. That's got to sit down. I did put a little, um, I did heighten the loft a little bit, so it should have a little more spin. And that's what happened there. If it was regular loft, it probably would have been off the back of the, the green. Top. But it's not here, and we're going to have a 20-footer for birdie. And 3-2-1. Are we, did we put enough break on it? No, we put too much break on it. Man, my distance control isn't good today, but my second putts are doing pretty strong, and that's why I'm making a lot yeah, of par putts. That's what I'm um, figuring out right now. Is my second putts are doing good because my first putts are absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to say about the golf course. Um, again, this is the last video I'm recording for four Thanksgiving break. Hopefully you guys... Are having a good Thanksgiving break or just a good Thanksgiving in general depending on when you are watching this um, just oh that's not good that's not gonna be over the bunker that's gonna be in the rough by a mile Wow I did not expect that to happen I thought the wind was moving it to the left a little bit so I thought it was gonna bring it back that way I guess not um, I guess not yeah um, but yeah uh, what was I gonna say Looks yeah, like um, I, I'm i probably time. having a good Thanksgiving seeing the family. I haven't seen them. Well, I saw them a few weekends ago, but I don't get to see them as often as I did, say, like a year ago when... Or not a year ago, but like two years ago when I was there every single day. Like, I miss them a lot. Um, yeah, uh, that, that was an okay shot, I would say. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are having a good Thanksgiving. I... Um, no, my videos are going to be, yeah, videos aren't going to change in terms of, like, time and stuff like that during the Thanksgiving week, because I've already pre-recorded them and uploaded them and all that stuff, so everything is there for you guys to enjoy, even though I'm not recording every day, and that's a good putt to save bogey, actually, so very good putt there. The back nine, definitely harder than the front nine, so what am I, two over on the back? Ooh, I, I want to break even par. I want to break even par here and be like, see, I can even I can break even par on this golf course, pros. Watch me be awesome at this. Now the 16th hole. I was mentioning the 16th hole before. That little, that's not really bunkers. It's more like marsh. I would call it in real life. And you basically have to hit over the marsh onto the green, and it's a blind second shot over the marsh, which I think is really cool. After the elevated tee shot down, you hit over a blind second shot to this marsh. See how you do there. Um, it's a pretty interesting second shot, especially for something later on in the round good. where it's probably going to be a more important shot that you hit. And that is an absolute beauty right there. And so it's probably a lot harder of a shot just because of the situation okay, and like the part of the round and then as well as the actual difficulty of the shot. There, so that's pretty cool. Um, but there's a nice birdie there. Yeah, we are back to one under, and now we got two of the three hardest holes on the golf course coming up a 250 yard par three we did birdie a 250 yard par three in the on the front nine number three so maybe we can do something similar right now that would be the plan stan if you there's someone out there named stan um i'm probably not even going to be close i'm probably 30 miles over the green um yeah kind of actually i kind of am 30 miles over the green i am over the green and this is going to be a really tough putt yeah or a chip um, this is probably a chip, yeah. Um, but still, really, really tough. That's probably 30 feet over the 
over the hole. Or get in. Get in. Oh, that's got to sit, though. That's got to sit because there is a little bit of a slope right there. But I just miss it, and we're going to make a par here. We go one under on par threes over 250 yards today. Don't know how that happens. Don't know how that happens, but now we got to figure out a way to get finish strong on this 18th hole, which I think one of the times... In, like, it's playing 500 or so yards in this course. 497, but just probably because of pin and stuff. But in one of the rounds, it played 540 yards as a par 4. Some people couldn't even reach the fairway on this par 4. And that's absolutely crazy. Like, Chambers Bay, they had that hole that could switch between a par 5 and par 4, depending on the tees and stuff. Like, that... That would be probably something they should have done here right, for 540 yards. yards. But apparently yeah. they decided not to, and that that happened. Well, that was kind of a different breed altogether, I would say. Yeah, like, the 18th and the 1st at Chambers Bay, that's a completely different, like, topic to discuss, I would say. Um, it definitely should be well, a 5. It was a par 5 green, par 5 distance, here. even from the par 4 spot. Cabbage. But... Let's Whatever. The, the, this was a really long par 4. That's that really ball. all that needs to be said. A really, really long par 4 that some people couldn't even reach the fairway for, depending on this, does, like how far you hit your drives, which is absolutely crazy. Um, i got to chip this in to break even par, by the way. i got to chip this in to break even par. That Yeah, that's not going in. That's not going in. That might go in. That might go in! Oh! Ho -ho! Oh, and now stop rolling, please. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. That was right, the nice closest little, chip I've had all day. Man. Man, that was almost a way to end the round there. That was almost a way to end the round, but I get the even par 70. I, I will take that. Four rounds like that, and I would have won the U.S. Open. So that's really all I have to say about that. Um... But yeah, that was Marion for you guys. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the next golf video. I might play a couple different courses just until the season starts again because the RSM Classic was the last official PGA Tour event before the 2018 calendar year. So I'm not sure. I definitely want to do golf videos. I'm just not sure what the format will be. I might just play like this or I might try the course creator. I did, Like I said last time, I'm probably going to try the course creator at some point in this next month and a half or so um so be looking out for a video on that but for right now i am going to end this episode right here so if you guys enjoy the video go ahead and drop it with a like go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more from me and i will see you guys with a new video real soon bye